say stop anytime you want. Stop, right there, perfect. I'll go ahead and actually take a look at the card you stopped at and uh, see of diamonds. All right, I'm gonna hand the deck to you. I would like you to go ahead, uh, cut a packet of cards and turn it face over and place it back on top of the deck, just like that. Um, and then go ahead, cut a deeper packet, turn that over and set it back down on top of the pack. So now we're gonna spread through the cards until we find the first face down card. And this is a completely random card. Neither of us could have predicted what it is, but uh, in fact, it's actually oh, these two diamonds. All right, please cut the cards. So you cut the cards just like that. Um, and keep in mind, you could have cut anywhere you wanted. But you cut right here to this card right here. And uh, these two diamonds. All right, I'm gonna spread the cards, and uh, you touch any one you want. That one right there. Okay, look, we'll even take that card out. And uh, we'll take a look at it here together and uh, ace of diamonds. I'm gonna spread the cards and you touch one. That one right there, perfect. Uh, I'll even take it out of the pack so you can look at it and uh, it's ace of diamonds. And welcome back to the channel. My name is Josiah and in this video I'm gonna be teaching you not one, not two, not three, not four, but five different easy ways to force a card on someone. Uh, now we've discussed card forces a little bit here on the channel uh, and just to remind you what a card force is, basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It's when you uh, appear to be giving a spectator a free choice of any card in the pack that they want, but in fact they always will pick the card you want them to, and in this case we'll be using this uh, beautiful piece of art here, um, but um, I've taught a few forces here on the channel, I believe, like maybe two or three forces, I believe. Um, the ones I can remember off the top of my head right now are the Riffle Force, the Underspread Touch Force, and um, the Topsy Turvy Force. So um, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go check out the videos teaching those forces. Um, but today we're going to be showing you... I am going to be showing you uh, f five different ways uh, that you can force a card on someone and they're all really easy ways um, but they're really deceptive ways as well. Um, so without further ado, let's just get right into it. This video is brought to you by the Card Magic Academy Video Library. It is a free library available on the Card Magic Academy website that will allow you to access all of the videos on my channel separated into different sections. You can access a video by clicking on the thumbnail for that video, and once there, you can play the video, and you can also look at the description box uh, beneath the video to see what the video is about and get access to things like the deck of cards I'm using, what this video is based on, and such. You can access this free video library by going to bit.ly slash CMA Magic Site. Alright, this first force is called the slip cut force. I'm going to riffle down the side of the deck and you call stop whenever you feel like it. Stop! Right there. Okay, we'll actually even take a look at the card you just stopped at and it just so happens to be the forced card. Alright, so uh, basically the idea behind this force is very similar to the riffle force that we've taught before on the channel as well as the topsy-turvy force that looks like this. Um, and it's probably the most uh, basic force out there. Actually, it's not the most basic force out there, but um, it is probably the most beginner in terms of um, a lot of beginner magicians. This is oftentimes one of the first forces they learn. Um, I know several magicians. I know Shin Lim, in fact. I believe this was the first force he learned as well. Uh, but it's just a super easy force to do. So let me show you uh, how it's done. So you're going to get into this position here. You're going to want, you're going to start in basic mechanics grip where you have your thumb along the side, index finger here. These three fingers are along the side. You're going to Curl your index finger underneath so that you can riffle the deck. And as you riffle the deck, you're going to be holding everything in place with these three fingers as you normally would when you riffle the deck. And that's the best way I can explain it. You're just going to have to kind of play around with it until you find what works. But you're going to riffle wherever they call stop. You're going to break the cards where they call stop and you're going to break them pulling up like this. Now, this is where it's going to be very similar to if you do like a, 
a false overhand shuffle, a top bottom attention overhand shuffle where you're just holding back that card at the back. Um, but basically, what you're doing is when they call stop, when you break the cards, you're going to be clamping your these three fingers down just slightly on the very edge of this top card so that this top card actually slides along with them and lands on top of this bottom packet. And it looks like that. And at speed, it should look like this. And uh, you can even hear it a little bit, um, that sound of the card being slipped on. Like that. And you're just slipping that card right onto that packet. It's very simple to do. Uh, and it just, once again, you just riffle, they call stop, you lift up. And the thing is, the best way that you can um, disguise, I guess, the sound of that card being uh, slipped on there is that immediately after it slips, you just tap. And you make this, you make a very loud tapping noise, where you, and that's simply made by hitting, or not really hitting, but tapping, literally, the edge of this packet of cards, the top packet, against the, just the back of these cards. And uh, if you do it, it will really, it will disguise the sound, and you won't even notice the sound of the card being slipped. You'll just hear that, the tapping sound. So that's basically all there is to the slip cut force. And then you can, of course, give this card to them. They can look at it, and of course, it is your forced card. Uh, now, another variation of this that you could do instead is it looks like this. Call stop right there. Okay. Uh, and we'll even look at the card you stopped at. It's this card right here. And obviously, the way that variation works is that rather than pulling back with these fingers, which I think is the more deceptive way to do this, you're just pulling with your thumb to glide it here. So you riffle, and as you just pull with your thumb, you use this direction to pull this packet forward and set it here, set this here, and then you can show the card. All right, this force is known as the Henry Christ force or the cut deeper force. Um, basically, all that happens is you hand the deck to someone and this is a completely hands-off force. It's a great one to do over Zoom as well with someone. There are a couple tricks you could do with that. Um, basically, you ask someone to uh, cut a small packet of cards, turn that over and set it back on top. Then you ask someone to cut a deeper packet of cards, turn that over and set that back on top as well. Then from here, you spread through all of the face-up cards until you reach the first face-down card. You ask them to look at that first face-down card as their selected card. And of course, it is your forced card. All right, so basically how this is done is very simple. Um, but, you know, and it's very it's very logical when you think about it. Uh, but if in the moment when you're presenting, people don't really think about it that much. And it really, it just works so well. It's beautiful. So... Basically, what's happening is you're going to have your force card on the top of the deck, okay, just like this, face down. You're going to ask them to cut a small packet of cards and turn that over. What this does when they set it back on top is it means that the very last face-up card is your forced card. Then when you ask them to cut a larger packet, what they're doing is they're cutting more than those face-up cards. Now watch this. When they're turning it over, they're actually basically turning all of these face-up face cards over and setting them back in the middle of the deck underneath a turned over face-down packet. So basically, you go from here with this position, when you turn it over, now this, this face-down packet at the bottom, the top card is your force card because remember it was face-up before, and now this supposed, and now this, um, extra packet that's now flipped over is now on top. So when you set this back on top, now it's purely self-working that you just spread through the face-up cards so you reach the face-down card. It's very simple to do. It's just a simple matter of turning one packet over, picking it up with that card there. By turning it over, you're turning their card over and making their card the first face-down card so that when you spread through, there's the card, they take it, and, you know, when it's, it seems like a completely random card, but in fact, it is simply their card. Um, now, um, there is a really great variation of this force that you can check out in the Encyclopedia of Card Tricks. Uh, and in the double backer section called, um, and they call it the Perfect Force. And so in that book, when they call it the perfect force, basically it's just a variation of this that uses a double backer, and rather than having to cut cards two times like this, uh, what actually is happening is that you only have to cut the cards once like this, and the first face down card is their card. So basically an overview of this force, you get a double backer, which I talked about, I've talked about double backers before, um, 
in one video that I'll leave a link to up on screen in the description. But basically you get your double backer, you put it on top, uh, and underneath it you're going to put the card you want to force and you want to put that card face up like this. And you can do this with multiple cards you want to force as well, but I'm just going to be teaching you for one single card. So then you just, it's self-working because you just have to have them pick up a packet, turn it over and set it down. And automatically the first face down card they come to will be the forced card. And the reason why this works is uh, similarly based on logic. Because this card is face up, because the double backer is a double backer, even if you turn it over, it still looks like it's face down. So when you're turning this over, you're turning a packet of cards face up, but you're turning the top two cards in the opposite direction. So what this does is it puts this card face down, and the double backer simply acts as cover for this face up card. Uh, so of course you do this, and then you can spread the deck. The first face down card, of course, will be your forced card. <laughs> Alright, this next force is known as the crisscross or crisscross cut force. And basically, what you do is you hand the deck to the specter, you ask them to cut a packet of cards, any packet of cards, off to the side, and they do so, and you complete the cut. So, you then explain to your spectator that uh, they really could have picked, uh, cut anywhere they want, they could have cut any number of cards they wanted inside the deck, but they just so happened to cut to this card right here, and in fact it is your forced card. So this is a very simple force to do, and uh, the problem, the thing about this force is that most magicians don't perform it, and the reason why is because they feel like it's too obvious of a force. And if you just watched it as it is, chances are this force probably didn't fool you, um, but using this direction, this force works really well because um, basically all that's happening is you're going to have them cut off a small packet of cards off to the side, and keep in mind, uh, once again, their force card is the force card is on top. So you have them cut a small packet off to the side. And then you take the packet, uh, and in this case it's going to be off to your right. Uh, it's, the, it's the left on the camera, but you, to your right. Then you take the packet that uh, they didn't cut, the packet that doesn't have the force card on top, and you're going to mark the spot where they cut by turning it on its side. This is the way the crisscross force was originally done. I don't like this because it draws attention to this cross and I just don't like it uh, it just requires more misdirection it just doesn't work so the way I like to do it is after cutting the cards I mark the spot I complete the cut but uh, rather than doing the entire crisscross on the side I just cross the corners and in that case I did it way too little uh, but you cut the you have them cut the cards and then you do that and so for me this is a lot better of an image it just seems like uh, it just for me works a lot better. I think this makes it a lot more believable. Almost, it doesn't draw attention to the fact that the cards are uh, misaligned in some way. So uh, you then look up to your spectator, you tell them, and you ask them this question. You say, do you really believe you could have cut the cards anywhere you wanted? <clears throat> and of course they'll say yes or no. Uh, it doesn't matter what they say because you're just providing misdirection, what's called time misdirection. And what that basically means is by giving time between the suspicious action or the sleight of hand action and the time of the reveal of what that action was able to achieve, um, you are basically kind of eliminating their idea of forgetting something. So by giving them time misdirection between when the cards were misaligned and when you actually pick up the cards, they're kind of not focused on the cards at this point, so you can just lift up and you can look and they can you can see this is your card. And we, they believe this is their card. I've never had anyone question that was the card. Um, it's because it's so fair. You just ask them, uh, do you believe you could have cut anywhere? You say, well, I think you probably could have, because keep in mind, you could have cut in any one of these cards. If you cut right here to this card right here. And so that allows for some time misdirection, and also it's a lot cleaner than the original version of this. They can then take this card, they can look at it, and it is, of course, their card. So uh, don't shy away from performing this. If you're doing it correctly, you just say, hey, cut the cards, and then we'll complete the cut. And you don't have to say that, but you just say, all right, do you think you could have cut anywhere you want? And they say yes, maybe they say no, and you say, well, actually, I think you probably could have, because you could have cut to any of these cards. And keep in mind, you're just picking up the cards you misaligned that are actually still the bottom cards. But you cut right here to this card. Can you actually take it from me? They take it, and they look at it. It's the force card.
All right, for this next force, this is known as the double lift force, and you'll see why in a second. But basically, I'm just going to spread the deck, and I'm going to ask my spectator to touch any card they want. So let's say they touch this card right here. I'm going to outjog that card, and I'll even spin the card out. And we'll actually take a look here at the card, and in fact, it just so happens to be the card we want to force on them. All right, this is a very simple, simple, simple force. Probably the most basic force you can do. Um, and the reason it's called the double lift force is because it's just a double lift. That's literally it. You just have the force card on top, like this. You spread the deck to have them touch a card. Then you out jog the card, meaning you stick it out toward them, toward away from you, the magician, a little bit. Of course, you don't want to flash it to your audience because, of course, it's not their card. And you're going to spin it out. And uh, once you spin it out, you're going to go into doing a double lift. Now, if you are doing a double lift, like most double lift variations where you get a pinky break like that. A, this is a great misdirection because in the action of spinning out the card you could actually push this card over and get a break beneath it just like that. So you just get your break, you set this on top, and then you go into your double lift. And that's literally it. There's nothing else to that. It's just the simple matter of taking a card out and you can do it by means of riffling or spreading the deck and then you show the card is um, this card. Now, one thing to note about the double lift variation is that it this variation only works if you uh, if it's a trick where you can see the card as well. Um, so, you know, if you if it's one of those tricks where it's kind of like the magician's trying to find your card or trying to guess your card or anything like that, you won't want to do this force because it's gonna be kind of stupid to go. This is your card, and like obviously you can see that. Uh, so that's basically all there is to that force, and that is the double lift. Force. I know it seemed really simple and really obvious, but once again, just like with the crisscross force, don't sweat it. It actually works really well, uh, surprisingly enough, okay? And it's it might seem like a very kind of a weird but and simple thing to do, but trust me, I still perform this uh, force uh, from time to time, even now, and I still get great reactions uh, when doing this force. <laughs> All right, this last force is known as the topper force, um, and basically it looks like this. You're going to have someone touch a card as you spread the deck, let's say they touch this card, you out jog it, and you even take the card out to show it to them, and in fact it is your force card. All right, so this force is, uses a move, particular move, called the topper move uh, by Frank Garcia. Uh, and Frank Garcia originally came up with this move, um, at least as far as my knowledge goes, uh, basically just as a brief uh, way to show the card on top in his ambitious card routine. But uh, one of the greatest minds in magic out there, one of the most popular minds as well, um, Jay Sankey, a Canadian magician, he has his own YouTube channel called Sankey Magic, he, a uh, long time ago, he came up with a whole bunch of stuff based on the topper. So he took Frank Garcia's move, uh, basically twisted it, uh, put his own spin on it, and it has done a whole bunch of things for him and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you can check some of that out on his Inside Deception training site, I'm sure. Uh, you could check it out definitely on his YouTube channel, I've seen some stuff. Um, but if you are interested in learning more about this move, go pursue uh, not Frank Garcia, but Jay Sankey, because he has a lot of stuff based on this move. All right, so uh, basically all the topper is, is it's a way to apparently take or show, um, we're going to focus on the taking for this particular version, but basically to pretend to take the card that's sticking out in the middle when in fact you're actually taking the top card. So obviously the force card is going to be on top. But basically, all you're going to do here is, I'm going to show you this kind of from a back view, is you're going to come over with your right hand, and obviously you're going to mirror this if you're uh, left-handed, but you're going to come over and you're basically going to make it appear to take that card like that. And uh, from behind, uh, in the actual move overview, it'll look like this. Sort of like that. Um, sorry, I was looking at the scope of my camera, so it's kind of hard to see. But uh, from behind, it looks like this. It's literally it. So basically all that's happening is you're going to have a card out jogged. And so obviously you would do that by spreading the deck and then having a card sticking out like that. As you come over to take the card... You're gonna come, and you're gonna you're gonna come with these fingers in front, basically covering up the entire thing like that. Your thumb's gonna be your head at the back where it can touch and drag this card. 
So your thumb, what your thumb's gonna do is it's actually just gonna drag that card forward like this. So as you're, it's gonna drag that card as your hand moves forward so you can grab that card. At the same time, these fingers are gonna hit that card that's sticking out back into the deck. So you need to learn to do these two things. You need to learn to come over here and do this and take the card like that. And you also need to learn how to do that, okay? And then once you've mastered both of those movements, hitting this card back in and dragging this card forward, you're gonna combine them so that as you hit the card in, in slow motion, you're just grabbing this. And you don't even have to push it in all the way. Um, that's one thing I've noticed. But you just come over here, you, as you hit it in with these fingers, you're grabbing it and setting it here. And the thing about it is it happens so quick that you don't even have to push that card in all the way. It can stick out a little bit. Just because at the end of the move, the card's going to be a little bit um, messed up anyway, you can just come back and use your index finger to just push the card in the rest of the way that uh, you didn't get pushed in. It's literally that simple. So that is a basic overview of Frank Garcia's topper move. And basically, it's just all you, that's basically what you, all you have to do to do the force. You just out drop the card. The card, the force card is once again on top. And then you do the topper and set it down. Um, and I'll obviously leave a link down below to a video by Jay Sankey where he taught the topper move in much more detail. So one more version of this force you could do is that after they touch the card, um, you come here and rather than taking the card out, you can actually just flip the card as you show it a little bit. But obviously that's um, for another time. Uh, for now, we're just going to focus on that simple version of the topper. Uh, if you would like me to teach more stuff using the topper, if you'd like me to teach the topper more in depth, leave a comment down below if you'd like that. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are all five forces. Hope you practice them well. And these are really good forces to use. I know some of them seem, might seem kind of silly. They all seem kind of simple. But even for an expert level magician, these are really great forces. You might add to your own repertoire as well. All right, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, all of that fun stuff. Um, I hope to see you in this next video coming up. Uh, and I think I've been putting it off kind of for long enough now. I think I'm really, now that I've kind of gotten through some things, I think I'm really excited to finally go and teach you guys something using, uh, or I guess teach what I had hinted at in my deck collection video a couple weeks back. So, um, I hope that you enjoyed this video, um, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.